Wholeness Tribe, and uh, this is all a part of that promise that I made about getting in this camera and doing more of these shorts, at least uh, as much as I can, to keep everyone aware of what's happening in real time. And uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about today is why most people don't actually have spiritual experiences and how to increase your probability of having spiritual experiences. Well, the first reason is, is of course, that the body and the spirit are melded together. And this process that melds them together is automatic. It doesn't actually need you to remember how to keep it intact. And this is called autonomous. It's like the same system that our breathing's on, the same system that, uh, you know, how your liver functions and, you know, when you eat food, how it goes down in certain areas, all that's autonomous process. We don't actually have to think about, you know, that being done in order for it to occur. So it's the same thing in the reality, the way that the body and the spirit are together, if for some reason you had to remember that they're supposed to be together all the time, let's say for instance you're in the store or you're talking to a friend, all of a sudden you would start coming out of your body and then you would have to remember, oh my goodness, my body and spirit is connected together. But that's all on automatic. It's like the same thing that when a person starts to yawn and then you start to have the yawn, there's this autonomous process that goes on with the body that has specific type of commands. So what happens is, is that when a person spends so much time in the physical reality, it's that they're kind of hardwired and constantly broadcasting that the physical reality is the only reality. They literally have to begin to tell themselves that, hey, there's a spiritual reality out there and I need to pursue that. So the body starts to, de to get itself prepared for the detachment, right? And so the next thing is, is that it, it, there's something also unique to study within this autonomous process in that whole par parody that I gave you about yawning, like you yawn and then someone else's yawns. That means there's this autonomous program that can be activated within each individual. And I feel like personally that that's what Kabbalah is. Uh, Kabbalah not being the one that everyone sees passed around and belongs to the Illuminati or whatever, but Kabbalah meaning or resuscitation meaning it's actually supposed to be communicated to you by something that is already aware of that. It's not written down anywhere. And a big way of uh, thinking about this is that when you do have certain experiences, you may fold your hands in a certain kind of way, or you may just go out with some kind of tone or vibration, and you hadn't read that anywhere or learned, learned how to do it from somewhere, you just automatically did it. That's the real Kabbalah, because another state of your higher consciousness is actually instructing you on what to do. So you could imagine then that there's this whole archive of autonomous codes that can be used in order to trigger certain responses from the body, such as the mudras and things like that. One of the main things that I started noticing in my own experiences was when you start to learn how to, let's say, tamper with or hack that process of the body and the mind, or excuse me, the body and the spirit being fused together, then you can start be to basically detach from the body. And during that process, you actually witness everything in the real reality beginning to part particleize or actually disappear. And the reason why that occurs is because everything is here now as sound. So we're perceiving all the sounds and the waves of everything that's around us automatically. And this makes us aware of this reality. It puts us here. And again, we do that automatically. So anytime we start uh, um, tampering with that automatic process, then all of a sudden things start disappearing and then we find ourselves into a different space. And when we tap back into this reality, some people call that grounding, then everything else appears again. So what this actually tells us is, is it tells us that the dimension in the reality that we're living in is still based on what we believe and what we want to have go on around us. And when we start making it pri priority to change that, then we start to mess with the mechanics that actually keep that there. So with that being said, I also wanted to send a quick message out to the Flat Earth Mafia. And I call it that because whether I say something right about the Flat Earth or I say something wrong about the Flat Earth, I tend to get all these people that hit me up after that that seem to be personally, a lot of them, not even really tapped into spirituality, but just more of wanting to argue about the flat earth situation. So here's a way to prove it once and for all of what kind of planetary system that we live on, and, as, and it is according to how you believe. So for me, the flat earther is actually here. This is a part of the structure that they exist on, meaning that the circle in itself of their consciousness is telling them that the world is flat. 
Now, because everything is energy and everything is an energy field, these are, this is actually geometry that just helps us explain what's organic and what, how uh, organic things are constructed, which is based on spheres and which is based on spiral, spirals. That's called pi. So when you unfold this, you actually get another shape. And the first one is this sphere. And if you look at it here, you could see that this is a perfect sphere. And that sphere is what the people who exclaim that we're on a spheroid planet, that we're on a, a round planet or a ball, this is what they're referring to because this is how energy works. Everything is energy. So there's no use in arguing about what shape the energy is because energy always obeys certain laws and certain mechanics based on the frequencies, right? And then ultimately when you move into your spiritual field, when you're finally realizing what's going on, you move into this Taurus. And this Taurus is actually the design of the geometric field that's around the body that we call the aura. And this gives us basically a morphogenic field to where we can assimilate many of the kind of geometries that are embedded within this field. So there it is. We realize that the earth isn't in fact what we want it to be. And that when we start to tamper with the part of our consciousness that actually links us here and we detach from that, if you may, then we're capable of getting into other spaces that have different types of shapes, which are frequencies, and we're able to be aware of what goes on there. So I want to say wholeness and balance vibrations to everyone. That's all I had to deliver for today, but it actually gives you some really big keys of not only why a lot of people don't have spiritual experiences, but how you can begin to increase your spiritual experiences by doing things like learning deep levels of meditation to where you can learn how to detach from the physical frequency that's constantly got you engaged every day, constantly got you just believing that it is the primary thing and how you can expand into other parts of your consciousness. Those who are looking for more of a, a technical and, or a scientific perspective on what exactly causes the body and the realities to animate and reanimate, it's actually cymatics. That cymatics are obviously the patterns that frequencies create. So if everything is sound around you, that means that the geometric structures that take for this stuff to form itself is actually cymatics. So what was discovered is, is that you can break down a cymatic that's like departicleization, so everything is disappear disappears, and then you can reanimate a cymatic in another space and time, and that's actually the key to time travel. So what we find is, is that the truth is, is that we have these faculties inside of our own consciousness that are very cone-like. They show the entry and the exit points of the chakras. They show uh, certain languages. They show sound waves that all of them seem to pinch off into something that's very similar to a cone. So what happens in reality is actually you're squeezing this small perception of the reality that you're having right now into this tube or into this cone and this is what's coming out that's solid around you so when you begin to play with that it actually begins i mean you begin to play with that cone of what you're perceiving in your reality then you can start being aware of actually other things that are in the reality and you can also begin to shift yourself through realities and the easiest way to uh, explain this is actually what you see in the movie dune with them talking about that the spice is actually an element that allows a person to fold space and time without moving anywhere. However, you see another big key to the whole thing is that fear is the mind controller. And with fear, you can't actually use the spice. And what I believe this is really about is, is it's actually telling a person directly that you have these faculties inside of your consciousness that produce, let's say, whether it's dimethyltryptamine, let's say it could be serotonin. Basically, it produces all these different elements that allow you to fold space and time or achieve things that even break the dynamics of physics, etc. However, to do that, you have to remove your fears because let's say in the event that the reality starts departicalizing around you, how are you going to feel? Are you going to feel like you know, you've done something wrong or you've gone crazy or maybe you're about to die? There's going to be all these reactions and the interesting part is those reactions inside of our body start immediately releasing another element that actually brings us more into this reality and makes us more present. It's kind of like the smelling salts that you would see a boxer that have been given when he's been knocked out. So the, the thing about this is, is that our body has all this chemistry going on. And this is why alchemy became such a big key for a part of the, the understanding of the transit that happens with us going into high vibratory frequencies to understand it more. And it's primarily because that when you learn how to regulate the 
chemicals that are in your body, the process of those chemicals, and the process of how they go into your consciousness and how you perceive them, then you put yourself into this vehicle as an actual operator of the vehicle, what we call an uploader, rather than a downloader, one who's just perceiving things and reacting off of what they perceive, rather than beginning to manipulate the field and start to manifest the things that they want to manifest in this reality. So again, that's a, just a bit more detail of how that ho whole thing works with moving through space and time and how things can dematerialize cymatically and then rematerialize somewhere else because we're still talking about waves anyway. We're not talking about something that is as solid as people would like to believe it is. And I'll say it just like that because if a person believes it's solid, then it is solid. The moment that they stop believing in that, then they're actually capable of traveling through that space and finding other places. There it is.